the assumption throughout this video is that you have some computer knowledge. I invite you to watch these 19 seconds shots from some random computer screens booting up and see if you can notice something common between all of them. There's a reason I'm showing this to you and we'll come back to this later. Important disclaimer. This video is a technical guide on how the RED camera internal software prevents the camera's full functionality when you attach SSD to the camera, even when the drive you attach to the camera are similar to those that are found inside RED Minimag enclosure. This remained a mystery to many for a long time. And at the end of the day, mysteries are to be solved. This video is for educational purposes only. The information in this video may enable you to use any SSD with your camera. But please understand that whatever you do with your newly gained knowledge is solely your responsibility, not mine. You would do whatever you do at your own risk. And I cannot be held responsible for any damages to gears, equipment, software, devices, etc. Neither this video nor me intend to encourage you to do anything. If in doubt, don't do it or get a professional to do it for you or get a professionally made one. I divide this video into two main parts, the adapter part and the SSD part. First, adapter. This is a full-size SATA connector. It is separated into two segments. The segment highlighted in blue contains power contacts. The other segment highlighted in green is the data segment. Let's set the power segment aside for a minute so we can only have a look at the data segment. The data segment has seven contacts. Only two pairs of those seven contacts are data contacts. Pins number two and three and pins number five and six. That leaves us with four data wires. The other three are shared ground contacts. Now, let's bring in the power section as well. We know that modern SSDs work with 3.3 volt. That leaves us with another power wire. So as you can see, we have four data wires, one grand wire and one power wire. That is four wires for data and two for power and ground. To be able to successfully run an SSD, we only need six wires so far. But what about MSATA? Let's take a look. For some reason, the designers of MSATA decided to retain the connector compatibility with Mini PCI Express connector. Therefore, MSATA connectors are identical to Mini PCIe connector. They look alike, but electronically function differently. To retain that compatibility, the designers of MSATA had to go with 26 pins on each side. That makes a whopping 52 contacts. How can we manage that? How far is it from the standard SATA? Let's take a look. This is an MSATA datasheet from Micron. I took the Micron one because Micron is the most common drive used in RED Minimac devices. Other than that, any other standard MSATA interface connectors pinout should be the same. The datasheet gives us a table of 52 contacts. Some of these connectors are not connected. To simplify our table, let me take out those that are not connected. And there are quite a few of them. Most of them are already gone. We can now almost immediately recognize our two pair of data connectors, which are highlighted in yellow. Next stop, let's identify all the shared grounds. I highlight them all in green. Next, let us indicate all the power contacts. I highlight them in blue. Most of the pins are already gone. We don't use two-wire interface with RED Minimag, so we will let them go. RED also doesn't use device sleep. I black it out. It leaves us with two optional wires, the device presence detection and drive activity LED. RED doesn't use drive presence detection. And we will notice that the drive activity LED is on pin 49. The drive activity LED can also kind of be used to detect the drive presence. Now the table is very simplified. We have our two pairs of data wires, 
we have our ground and power wire, and we have our drive activity LED wires. Seven wires is all there is in Red Minimac. Now we have a clear picture to look at. We notice that our two differential signal pairs are on pins 23, 25, and 31, 33. When you know what you are looking at, it is much easier to understand it and figure it out. This is the adapter. We can immediately recognize that two pair of data wires, that four wires, wire number one, wire number two, number three, and number four. Four wires out so far. Let me flip the adapter on the other side. We can see where pin number 52 is. And from the data sheet, we know the drive activity LED was on pin 49. So if we go three positions back from 52, we will end up in 49. And this is the drive activity LED. Our wire number five, flipping the adapter back again, Red uses the entire top row for the shared ground, our wire number six, and those highlighted in blue for power, that's wire number seven. So there you have it, seven pieces of wire making pin-to-pin -pin connection. An invention, this is as old as the hills. Second, the SSD part. I also divide the SSD part into two separate sections with 2017 separating them from each other. Let's call them pre-2017 and post-2017, which is after Ginimac. Those post-2017s are Red Minimac 480GB and Red Minimac 960GB. But those pre-2017 are Red Minimac 120GB, Red Minimac 240GB, Red Minimac 512GB, and Red Minimac 1TB. This video only concerns pre-2017 Red Minimacs. We know that all the SSDs in Red Minimac devices are running on stock SSD firmware provided by the SSD manufacturer available to the general public. And there's nothing special or customized about them. How the internal camera software prevents the camera's full functionality when you connect a similar SSD to the camera. In his latest post, Mr. Jared Land, president of Red Company, stated that we of course make our own firmware to write to the media and the media has its own unique identifiers to accept the writing from the firmware. While I think no one could have done a better job with stitching nonsenses together like this, let's take a look to see what he is up to. MSATA is a still a SATA drive and must comply with SATA interface standard and have to comply with ATA command set and protocol. ATA handbook has almost everything you may need to understand the operation of any ATA device. One of the most critical things ATA protocol dictates is the device identification, known as identified device data log. And one of the most crucial components of that data log is the drive's capacity. Let's have a closer look at the identified device. ATA standard outlines the identified device data log is mandatory for ATA devices, meaning that every ATA device has to have their identification log including those SSDs inside Red Minimac. So when Mr. Jared Land states our SSDs have their identification code, although they are not code and they are log, he is probably playing with the words. So later on, if asked, he can say, I was right. Every ATA device must have identified device data log. So does ours. I'm fundamentally right. The thing is, as you can see, this is not exclusive to Red's SSD devices. The identified device log is mandatory by ATA. Going further down, we can see the structure of the identified data log. After the copy of the identified device data, the topmost and most important data is the capacity that is being reported. The capacity is marked with key M, meaning that reporting correct capacity is mandatory for all devices. So when the device identifies itself and reports its correct capacity on its power-up sequence, the host should be programmed to go to a further extent to get this correct report and convert it into a false information to be displayed to the customers. This is not a natural behavior. It's like taking your car to a petrol station or gas station to fill it up with 52 liter of fuel. But the gas station owner goes to extend to change the reading on the pump so you get about 7% less fuel when you see the number on the pump that you wished for. And not only that, but also when you're not looking, the gas station owner sends someone underneath your car to change the gauges 
So when you get back into your car, you get a false reading from the instrument cluster of your car. So you've been led to believe that you got 7% more. And when you happen to catch the gas station owner, he just says, it's not a big deal because they have other bills to pay. Based on ATA protocol command set, the command to request the device to identify itself is EC. Once the EC command is issued, among others, one of the information that is being reported is the SSD's serial number set by the SSD manufacturer. We know that the drive has no customized or special firmware, and the drive identification is common and mandatory for all ATA devices. How the camera's internal software prevents the camera's full functionality when you attach a non-red SSD to it. Remember that 19 seconds shots of computer screens booting up? I want to play that again for you, but this time we will look at them slightly differently. Have you noticed anything? Yes, all that red markers. Smart, isn't it? S-M-A-R-T. This standard feature of modern drives are with us for so long that we almost forgot about it. But when you are coming up with an easy money-making scheme, the user's forgetfulness can be a useful thing. S-M-A-R-T stands for Self-Monitoring Analysis and Reporting Technology often written as a smart, is a monitoring system included in computer hard drives, solid-state drives, and others. The primary function is to detect and report various indicators of the drive's reliability with the intent of anticipating imminent hardware failure. It's nothing new, and it's not exclusive to RED devices. It's a standard feature of almost every modern drive. Imagine a row of boxes. Each of them have a name, like number 5, number 10, number 24, and they contain a value, a number. Let's call each of these boxes a log, L-O-G. Once you call each of these boxes number, they will show you their contents, which is a number, a tiny bit, a couple of bits. And because they're designed to report faults, their contents can be interpreted as fine, cool, okay, I'm reliable. Some of these numbers are threshold price. For instance, the number of improper shutdown or power loss, the number of bad sectors, the number of time that the device surpassed its maximum operating temperature. Once the number hits the threshold, while the drive might still work, but it will report that it's not as reliable as before. You can also write or put values into some of these boxes. For example, if I put this value into that box, the next time that I point to that box, the same data that I've written on it, will be shown back to me. Now, consider that there are a lot more than one row. The founders didn't go only for the minimum number of these boxes that they required. They predicted in the future they might need more. They designed a lot more of boxes that they actually require. So in case in the future they needed more, there is no need to go back and change the protocol. Now that we have more than enough boxes, we will have some boxes with some values in them, and some boxes will be left empty or blank inside and reserved for the future. Now imagine that you choose one of these blank boxes at the back and put a number in it, a value. There's a lot of them there. Who will ever notice? Let's go back to our ATA handbook under the self-monitoring analysis and report technology section. On the smart feature set, there's smart feature set commands. The standard ATA protocol outlines the smart feature set allows for the protection of user data on the device and minimizes the likelihood of unscheduled system downtime that may be caused by predictable degradation and or fault of the device. A smart feature set provides the host with the knowledge of a negative reliability condition. In the command section, D5 is command for smart read lock. Remember the green arrow in our previous illustration? That was D5. And D6 is a command for the smart write lock. Remember the red arrow there when we put a number in a box? That was a D6 command. All of these are based on open source ATA command sets. When we look at the smart lock addresses, we will notice some of these reserved or blank ones. Like this one. 
or this one that meant to be blank. You can see there are more reserved ones mentioned in the table that I won't highlight because my hand hurts. You know, I'm not like some of the tech reviewers only sitting in front of camera and make false assumptions. I actually do stuff. Going ahead, there are a couple of more reserved ones here. But let's take a look at this one. This is a host a specific one. It is marked with M. That means this is a mandatory feature. We also can see RW keys, which means that this log is readable and writable. But what is a host a specific log? The handbook says the host a specific logs are mandatory for ATA devices and shall each contain 16 log pages. The content of the host a specific logs shall be common to all log commands. For example, if the host places data in a host specific log page using the smart write log command and issues a read log command to the same log page, then the host receives the same data that was originally stored by a smart write log command, meaning that it doesn't change and it doesn't go anywhere. Reformatting or changing the partition table doesn't affect this. Host specific logs may be used by the host to store any data. If a host specific log has never been written by the host, when read, the content of the log shall be zeros. We know people won't notice, we know it's a safe place, and we know we can read and write any data using standard smart read and write commands. There you have it. This is a perfect place for our little scheme, so let's go read on it. In your face, Linus. So we solved the mystery. But what number we put in there? Red being red, they chose the first thing that came into their attention. The SSD serial number set by the manufacturer. So all red does is the SSD serial number scrambled and put it into the smart lock 90. The SSD serial number is the drive's standard feature. We saw that in identify drive. And writing to smart lock is another drive's standard feature. If we consider this as a shady practice, this is the recipe. How to fake a customized firmware and create an illegal false monopoly. The REDS method. Here it is. When you attach a drive to a RED camera, inside the camera, the software reads the SSD model. If the SSD model is one of those that RED sells, match. And then it reads the smart log. If the content of smart log on a scrambled equals to the SSD's manufacturer serial number, the second match. And yes, the reading software allows the camera to function. It does not have anything to do with the SSD's quality or speed or firmware. Everything you heard about the SSD firmware was untrue. For example, like in 2013 when Western Land during the announcement of Red Minimac devices said, we do have custom firmware because of the way we write to the cards. In 2016, he said, for our media, we developed our own IP and firmware. The way we write to a card is very different than a normal SSD is programmed for. In 2019, there was not much place left to hide, Messerland said. We of course make our own firmware to write to the media. And media has its own unique identifiers to accept the writing from the firmware. And he carries on, custom firmware, and yes, I mean camera firmware, to write to the cards. So if the SSD or any drive needs something special, to accept the writing, how can we upload our footage into our drives in our laptops and edit machines and other places? How can they accept the writing of the same file? To the drive, the file is a file. The drive has no recognition of what these zeros and ones are representing. They can be your college essay, they can be music, they can be your naked picture from your holiday or your credit card statement right after that holiday. What is a media good for if it doesn't accept writing anyway? Let's don't be that worried. You're in safe hands. Mr. Phil Holland says his word, Mr. Jared Ward, is gospel regarding media. Well, gospel without miracles sounds a bit lame. So let me show you a tiny miracle to go down with the gospel. This is the first ever post about Ginimac that made on Red Scholar W Group. I know this because I just created Ginimac's Facebook page a very short while before this. This post timestamp is 6.12 a.m. GMT because I'm looking at it from England. This is 11.12 p.m. in California on 30th of July 2016. 
In about an hour later, at 34 minutes past midnight PST, this thread user Mr. Nathan created a new thread on Red User with its title Cheap Third Party Redmi Mac Replacement Genie Mac and says, I just stumbled across this one on Red Scholar W Facebook group. It reads, Coming soon, affordable, fully compatible Red Max Genie Mac. And he gives some more detail. Only 28 minutes later, at 2 minutes past 1 a.m., Mr. Phil Holland states, as Jared mentioned earlier today via the online discussion on the Book of Face Facebook, this is a scam. While enticing, his word is gospel regarding media. Looking at the bottom of the page, all the times on this thread are GMT-7. That means if I want to convert this PST to GMT, I have to add 7 hours to that timestamp. In other words, it was 2 minutes past 8 a.m. GMT when Mr. Phil Holland for the first time stated that Mr. Land already mentioned earlier today via the online discussion on Facebook that this is a scam. Please bear with me. If it wasn't a little bit complicated, it wasn't much of a miracle, was it? Going back to the first ever Facebook discussion about Ginimag and having our target time 2 minutes past 8 a.m. GMT, we'll take a closer look. This is Mr. Nathan. He's bringing back the information he has taken from Red User Group. He says, heads up, according to Jared, this is a scam. And the source is not to another Facebook discussion. The link goes back to the same thread in which Mr. Phil Holland claimed that Jared called it a scam. Also come this user. He says, be careful, Jared has apparently called BS on this. Link to source is also going back to the same thread on Red User. And here comes the miracle itself. Mr. Jared Land first comment. He says, this is not legit, not certified, not endorsed, and will never be because it's bullshit. Even if this was real, there are too many inaccuracies and violations going on here to list. But I figure you all are smart enough to see through this. And here's Mr. Nathan, hearing it for the first time from Mr. Land, says, thanks for confirming first hand, Jared. But Mr. Jared Land's red statement came out at 8.48 p.m. GMT. That is 12 hours 46 minutes later than what Mr. Phil Holland said that it was already discussed on Facebook. Is this not a pure miracle? Mr. Phil Holland knew what Mr. Jared Land is going to discuss 12 hours 46 minutes before he discussed it. Are we really dealing with miracles or metaphysics? Or are we caught in an intertwined web of organized lies? Or maybe we happen to have a glimpse of the behind of the curtain. Let me ask this question one more time. That's it. Go ahead and pull out the generic SSD from Red Mini Mag and have a look at the Smart Lock 9T and see what you find. See if you delete that number, your Red Mini Mag suddenly becomes an unknown media. And if you put it back there, your unknown media suddenly becomes a Red Mini Mag again. For Mini Mac 960 and 4IT that came out post Mini Mac, you can also take a look at Smart Lock 91. Make sure you create a backup before changing anything. Stay tuned.